All right, so we're looking at a shoe today that's been pretty popular. It looks like around like Instagram and social media amongst basketball players as being something different, but also something pretty familiar. Today, let's get into the serious player only, player one. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike from SneakerHistory.com and we are back with another video. Guys, thank you so much for joining. If you hadn't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. But you saw in the intro, yes, we are looking at that basketball shoe you've probably been seeing all over Instagram. It is the Serious Player Only Player One. Now, shout out to Serious Player Only for sending me a pair of these to check out. Take that back. Sending me two pairs to check out and really get a test in. They are a brand out of China and they have made a seriously nice product. Now, I know you're looking at the shoe right now saying, Mike, this looks very similar to another shoe out there. And more specifically, a Kobe. Yeah, it does. It does have a lot of similarities for, from a Kobe. And it's because this actually this shoe actually is paying homage to Kobe and his legacy in the shoe. Now the creators of Serious Player Only, big Kobe fans, you'll see, I'm gonna put a video in, probably on top of this, where you can see their really introduction to the shoe and their thought process behind starting a brand. Because Kobe Bryant was their, really their basketball idol. So being able to speak with them and understand what they're doing with the player one, it makes perfect sense. And some people are gonna say, well, why are they doing that? Why are they just copying something out there? Well. I can kind of see that, but at the, on the flip side, I don't really see it as a pure copy because although it does have similarities to a few different Kobe's, the Kobe 8, the Kobe 9 low, and I want to see the Kobe 11 with a 3 I really saw. I think a lot of people really attribute a look to the Kobe 11. I really think that this is just an overall, just a great shoe. And this is not their only model they're going to have out. This is their first model, and it's not just going to be all well, I guess Kobe based. If you go into a look at their Instagram, they're really open about showing the things that they're working on. So they're working on different models that are going to be different. So I really can appreciate what they're doing here by first off paying homage to their basketball hero and then giving really the consumer something familiar. Because think about it, if you are a consumer, the way a lot of sneaker heads, a lot of you know, people in the sneaker community think is that if it's not familiar, I don't want to deal with it. So they made something that could, you know, give us that, that glimpse of something familiar and I think it works. I really, I really do. I really think it works. And with that, I want to get right into the shoe because I actually tested this out in two different ways, both on the basketball court and in a gym, which I'll explain in a moment. But I have to say that overall, I think this shoe is a great basketball shoe. I will say that I am a very uh, casual basketball player, so I'm not out there in a super competitive setting. So. For that, I would say look at people like Soul Drop, look at people like uh, Nightwing and, and Wear Tester Screw for probably a more in-depth review on that front. But I'm giving you a casual, you know, pickup game in the rec center kind of review. And I think that's okay because they're different levels of basketball player. But again, if you go look at a lot of the, uh, the videos you see on Instagram, there are a lot of very competitive hoopers out there wearing this sneaker. Go check out their their website, go check out the Instagram. They are very, very good about showcasing not only the great, but also showcasing things that maybe they're looking to improve on. So if you look at Nightwing's review on the sneaker, he did have some criticism for them. Say, hey, this could be better, that could be better. And not only do they take that and stride, they, they run with it to make the shoe better. They actually still, if you go to the uh, Serious Player Only website, they are gonna actually post Nightwing and Wear Tester's review because they're proud of the shoe. They're proud of how they're able to go ahead and steer the ship and listen to consumers to make it better for the next product and the next product. So really respect them for what they're doing. Now, again, get into the shoe. The reason I, I did test it the way I did, again, both basketball and gym, because when I get basketball shoes in the hands, I really think about not the person like, you know, me who reviewing all these shoes, I got shoes really falling out the windows sometimes. And I think of the, probably like the person who is getting a shoe, that's their, the kid that's their only, you know, athletic shoe for the year, for basketball and for training for basketball. So I went to try, try it out in the gym and in the court in both settings to see how it performed. Now, overall, this shoe did great. I'll tell you that before we get into the, the, the makeup of the sneaker, the shoe did great. Only thing I would say we're gonna talk about the you know sizing is gonna be go up a half a size. The shoe runs kind of tight and small, but again, when I was speaking to one of the showrunners at the brand, they told me they're like, hey, let's go ahead and give you two different sizes. Let's see what one's, which one works best for you. Because typically in like Kobe, they base the size of course off the Kobe's. They say typically we you know the Kobe's run a little short, run a little small. So let's see if the you know ten and a half works better. 
I said, great, you know what, typically I'm a 10 in Kobe, but let's see, I know your shoe's different, clearly. So I tried the 10, which you're looking at here in the pink colorway, the cocoa pink colorway. It was kind of short, kind of small, almost kind of like a nine and a half. But the 10 and a half was perfect. Fit like a glove, I loved everything about it. So first things first, out the way, size and go half size up because they do run a little bit small. Now, the shoe is gonna be made up of what they call a never knit, and it's gonna be a translucent TPU mesh that's gonna have looks to be more of like a thicker TPU threading on top to give it a little bit more structure. Almost reminds me of some of the exposed fly wire that we got from Nike some years back. Similar concept, but I think a lighter, lighter product in the end because this one really, again, reminds me of the Kobe 8 most, but again, in a lighter version. I remember the Kobe 8 was really known for the engineer mesh that they utilized. That was really big at that point when the Kobe 8 did release. But this one uses that, again, that clear, the translucent TPU mesh and it holds up well, very light, and I do like the look of the stronger TPU threading they are using on the lateral side, the toe box, and the medial side of the sneaker. It, I felt really secure in the sneaker. I didn't feel like I was going anywhere. I didn't feel like the shoe was gonna break at any point. So it, it, it feels good. I, I really do like it. And it's still breathable. So usually when it comes to a plastic, it's not gonna be very breathable. So it's gonna get really hot, but they've got it to where it is breathable. So we're gonna get, of course, a B-roll shot. You'll see that there are actually some some almost, I don't want to say holes, but spaces in a knit to give you some airflow so that way you're not getting a, you know, extra sweaty foot. It's going to be sweaty for playing basketball, but it's not going to get overly hot because of no breathability. Now, if you look at the front of the toe box, you're going to have some fuse in the high wear areas going across the toe box, across the lateral side here, and going through the medial side. So that way you do have not only extra support, but also a way to keep the shoe in good condition because of those, you know, again, high wear areas from dragging your foot, sliding your foot, getting stepped on, you name it. It is going to make sure that those areas are going to be secure, especially when it comes to being around the midsole and outsole. We want to make sure that nothing's going to get you know, ripped up around that piece. Now, where the eyelets are is going to be, again, another fuse setting to make sure that the laces are going to be secure and they're not ripping through that, that TPU mesh. And it's going to be a flat lace, pretty typical flat athletic lace. They vary in color clearly. You can see that the cocoa pink one here is going to have a pink lace, while the what they call the hater colorway is going to have the black with the pink speckles in it. So really pretty, pretty standard, I think, when it comes to basketball shoes, but I wouldn't really have any in the way, honestly. Now the tongue is going to be a, what's the, a neoprene type tongue. You can see it here, and it's going to have kind of a, look like a synthetic leather tongue tag that's going to have the serious player only branding of top and pink and we're also going to have that same kind of synthetic leather synthetic suede going across the heel cup as well and this particular colorway is going to have the don't love me hate me on the back and that's their getting their hater colorway while you're going to have this cocoa pink is going to have a synthetic leather but not a suede finish this one's going to be more of a typical leather finish but it's going to have a little like really light graffiti print on there as well which is really cool. So they really do change it up based on the sneaker and the colorway. Now, with that, you're gonna have a TPU heel counter here to make sure you're not going anywhere. I felt locked in. I know, I'm, again, I'm not super competitive when I play, I'm very casual, but I felt locked in. Again, a very similar fit to what I had in the Kobe 8, and that was one of my favorite all-time basketball shoes until I blew it out completely. And we get to the midsole, it's gonna be a rubber midsole that's gonna have pretty solid traction pattern here. It's gonna be a mixture of herringbone and these like nut patterns. And the court I played on was at a rec center. Pretty clean court, I have to say, but no slippage. I mean, I can't be 100% clean, right? You're still gonna have some kind of dirt and residue on it from people coming in and out. But I'll say I didn't have any slippage. I felt really, really secure on the ground. Didn't feel like I was ever going to slide or if I was gonna come down or try to make a move, I was gonna get hurt. Felt really, really good on the traction piece here. And with that, you're gonna have your carbon plate as well. It looks like a coated carbon fiber plate. Uh, I don't know if there's anything actually put on top of it, but you can see the coarser carbon pattern. And we look at their website, which I have pulled up here as well. It is going to also mention, just call it carbon plate. But felt, again, nothing intrusive there. I know a lot of people talk about the setup kind of weird to where I feel like you could like cut through the rubber. I don't know. I'm not that heavy. I'm 175 pounds, so I don't see myself ever making a move and being big enough to make this plate come out of the rubber. So I don't know if that could happen. So who knows? I feel like they're pretty, they feel like they probably got it together to where that won't happen. So all in all, I think this is built very well. And that's just the outside. So we're gonna get into the uh, inside in a minute, which is gonna be something very reminiscent, something I missed from basketball sneakers that I hope they bring back in other brands as well. And that's gonna be the drop in midsole. 
Now, I know you guys do remember the Kobe's who had to drop in Lunalon midsoles. I love that. Especially, again, with the Kobe 8. That was one of the last Kobe's I actually played basketball in. I really love that drop in midsole. And they use a material called Evanlon. You'll see that here. It's going to be a foam material that has a very, like, deep setting. You see that? It is very deep. Like, it, your foot's in there. Like, it's, it's not going anywhere. So, that's one of the reasons I will say go up a half a size because with those high walls, it does kind of push your foot in because it's securing you in the shoe. So definitely go up a half a size. If you're a wide footer, I would probably, probably say go up a whole size just to be safe. Now with that at the bottom, you're not just gonna get the Evalon, you're gonna get some uh, extra pods here. The white material looks like, almost reminds me of Boost or you know some of that particular material is kind of like that popcorn. Well, that's the name of it, it's called popcorn. It's uh, gonna be their, their impact protection here on the forefoot, like right under the big toe area looks like, and of course in the heel as well. But they're gonna have a little bit more firm, a little bit more bouncy cushion in between it called bubble gum, if I'm not mistaken, or just gum. I made the bubble part up, it's just called gum. It's right here, gives you a little bit more bounce in there so you get a little bit more response, a little bit more energy return from those spots. I liked it. I, I like the shoe a lot. I, I tested it for about two weeks straight just to make sure I got every bit of time in the sneaker and I didn't have an issue, again, except for gotta go to half size up because this is the size 10 i put it on walk around is fine when it's not laced up but when i you know was ready to play i was like oh no my feet are literally getting smashed up against the uh, front of the toe box so we'll go up that half a size you will be happy about it and trust me it's, it's the best way to go and of course because we do have that uh oh let me grab this one right here actually probably be better since it's already insole taken out because we do have that particular drop in midsole it actually has another piece in there kind of like a uh just a little bit extra cushioning so you're gonna have adapt equipment so that's what they call it they don't actually have this piece listed out on their equipment list but this is gonna be in there as well and it looks like from the structure it looks very reminiscent of that that popcorn you can guys see that i didn't take b-roll of this i don't think because i just really saw it um but it's super soft really thin so i'll probably just add a little bit more impact protection just to take it over the top which again, playing ball, jumping, running, cutting, I didn't have any point of where I was getting, um, like I get plantar fasciitis sometimes in my foot when I play for a long period of time. Didn't have any issue. I know everyone's foot's different, so every shoe's not for everybody, but I'll tell you that this was, I was pretty solid. And of course, with that drop in midsole, shoe's gonna be extra light. You can do this number here, roll the shoe up. So that way you can see really how light that sneaker is. But overall, again, I really do. I like the shoe. I like everything about what's going on with the brand of series player only. Player one is a great start to, you know, what's to come with them. Again, they are really open about the product they're working on. If you look at their Instagram, they're just showing actively the things they're testing, like different drop-in midsoles. There's different drop-in midsoles they're working on. Uh, I think one strength, speed, and comfort. I, I think I got those right. I hope I hope I did. If not, again, I will post those up here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But this is just, again, a way to make a longer lasting shoe. That's one of the things they're looking for. They want a longer lasting shoe, something that can adapt to the player. And I guess I wouldn't say break the bank because the shoe is still 160 bucks, which is pretty typical for a basketball shoe. But if I can go ahead and make it last longer with these different inserts by just interchanging as they kind of wear down, that's my money's worth right there. So it checked a lot of boxes for me from the cushioning setup, the look, the feel, the inspiration. I'm very happy about the shoe. I really like it. I know, again, it's getting a lot of traction online. So you let me know. What do you guys think of the Series Player Only Player One? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you want to give it a try? Leave me a note down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it with you guys. And I'll leave the link to their website at the bottom as well. They do have four different colorways. Let me see. I want to say there's four of them. Uh, I could be wrong. It looks like we have five. Now, one of them is a limited edition, so I don't know how long it's going to be there. But there, right now, as I'm looking at the site, there are five different colorways available. So check them out. I think they have a, they have a good thing going. They're just getting started. But I think there's a lot of, lot of you know, upside to what they're producing. So I'm really impressed. Again, SPO, Serious Player Only, thank you so much for dropping these off. I really do appreciate being able to test them and give you my feedback. But until next time, guys, see ya.